These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Okay, so first of all, um, we should review what the definitions of oxidation and reduction are. So how do you know when something has been oxidized? If something's been oxidized, does that mean that it's gained bonds to oxygen or lost bonds to oxygen? Gained bonds to oxygen. Yeah. If something has been oxidized, something oxidized has gain bonds to oxygen. How about hydrogen? It means that you may have lost bonds to hydrogen. So gain bonds to oxygen and or lost bonds to hydrogen. Actually, the oxygen actually could be any electronegative atom, oxygen or any other electronegative atom, but in this course you're mainly going to focus on oxygen. Okay, um, so then something reduced has that gained or lost bonds to oxygen. Okay. And how about hydrogen? too hard to remember because to me the word oxidized sounds like getting more oxygens and then you can kind of work out all the other ones. These are the main definitions. <coughs> However, there's another set of definitions as well that are based on electrons that are sometimes useful to thinking about. Um, so if something's oxidized, has it gained or lost electrons? Gained. You ever hear of the mnemonic Leo the lion goes grr from general chemistry? Yeah. Maybe not, so let's go over that. Leo the lion goes grr. This is a very helpful memory aid. Leo the lion goes grr. What do these stand for? Well, this stands for loss of electrons is oxidation, and gain of electrons is reduction. Loss of electrons is oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction. I find this is a really helpful memory aid. It kind of clears everything up for me as far as uh, electrons and oxidation. So let's try again when you're ready. If something has been oxidized, um, has it gained or lost electrons? Something oxidized has lost electrons. Okay, well then, uh, how about something reduced? Right. Because GER, gain of electrons, is reduction. Okay, now uh, I don't want to confuse you. Usually in OCHEM, we don't usually use these definitions. Usually we focus on oxygen and hydrogen. So, I don't know, 95% of the time, focus on the oxygen and the hydrogen. But it is good to have in the back of your mind that these definitions work as well. And you can see where they are, because if you're gaining bonds to oxygen, well, remember that's very electronegative, and it's going to steal the electrons from you. If you're gaining a new bond to oxygen, well, the oxygen is going to steal electrons from you because the oxygen is so electronegative. That's why this could be gaining bonds to any electronegative. Yeah. And, um, okay, and then when you lose the bonds to um, oxygen and replace them with hydrogen, well, then you get those electrons back, because the hydrogen is going to share the electrons much more equally with you than the oxygen did. Okay. So these definitions are really two sides of the same thing. But we'll focus on the O and the H. You have this in your notes? Yeah. All right, so I'll erase that. OK, uh, remind me, what type of functional group is this? Um, alcohol. Yeah, this is what we would call an alcohol. Because we have the OH. Uh, so we can call this the alcohol carbon. We can call this the alcohol carbon. By the way, what we're going to be focusing on here is whether the carbon gets oxidized or reduced. We're focusing on whether the carbon gets oxidized or reduced. Um, now, uh, do you remember? Does the carbon get oxidized because it's making another bond with oxygen? Uh, yes. So, is this an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent? Oxidizing. Yeah, so we expect this to oxidize this. So I'll start by just copying the skeleton. Well, I'll actually put that in there. 
So here's that uh, carbon skeleton again, and here's the uh, carbon that used to be the alcohol carbon. But now it should have more or fewer bonds to oxygen. Yeah, it should have more bonds to oxygen. Uh, I should go to the This carbon really has two hidden hydrogens, right? It's actually going to help to draw the two hydrogens in. And this is a case where you should actually draw in the hydrogen. So I'll draw those two hydrogens in. OK, so we have to form a new bond to oxygen. We're going to form a new bond to oxygen. And by the way, if the oxygen is gaining a bond, it has to lose a bond. Since the oxygen is gaining a bond, it has to lose a bond. Otherwise, it would have a charge. And nature doesn't like charges. So the oxygen loses the hydrogen. I think that's why I ah, there you go. OK. So since the oxygen is gaining a bond, it has to lose the bond to hydrogen. That floats away. Um, and also, the carbon is gaining a bond, right? Yeah. That means the carbon also has to lose a bond. That means we have to break one of these carbon-hydrogen bonds. That turns out to be a very important idea. Uh, the important idea is that any time you oxidize carbon, you must break a carbon-hydrogen bond. Because otherwise, there's no room for the new bond to oxygen. So that's good to have in your notes. Anytime you oxidize carbon, in order to make room for that new bond to oxygen, you have to break a carbon-hydrogen bond. OK. Um, so there's only one hydrogen left. OK, I, I didn't think about um, getting rid of the hydrogen off right. of the oxygen. Yeah, that's one of our complications here. OK, good. Um, all right, so that would give us this product here. Uh, and when you're ready, what type of functional group is this? We saw that last time. A carbonyl that's attached to a carbon chain and a hydrogen is a aldehyde. So we can see this is a reagent we can use to make alcohols into uh, aldehydes uh, over here. OK, so that would give us this. Now, all the previous reactions we've learned in the course, we always learned that uh, the arrow pushing mechanism. We always went through the arrow pushing mechanism for every reaction. But you don't need to know the mechanism for this reaction. The mechanism for this is not all that uh, helpful. So we're not going to worry about the mechanism. You should just be able to go straight to the product. And how do you do that? Well, you break one of the carbon-hydrogen bonds, which you might not even have shown in the first place. Um, and you take off the hydrogen off of the oxygen. Since you're going to form a new bond between the carbon and the oxygen, both the carbon and the oxygen have to lose one of their old bonds. And they, they both lose a bond to a hydrogen. They're both going to lose a bond to a hydrogen. Because the mechanism is not important, they don't show it in the book or anywhere. So it was that's right. Normal. Actually, if you look really hard, you actually will kind of find the mechanism there. But that's not a good use of your time. It's not too helpful to us. That's right. So we just need to know how to draw the product here. Uh, remember, this is the oxidizing agent, and this is just uh, a good solvent. This is a typical solvent. Uh, it's not going to participate in the reaction. So whenever you have, like, um, if you have, like, three things mm -hmm. here, this is always the one that's reacting with You mean, uh, well, yeah, usually if they list a bunch of reagents over the arrow, I suppose usually the one that's actually participating in the reaction is listed first. Mm -hmm. And usually they might start listing the solvent second. And, yeah. and if they were going to make each of these be used, they would put them in steps, right? Uh, not necessarily. Um, you mean numbered steps? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So no, they, they could add a whole bunch of things together that would all participate in the reaction. Uh, I guess there's, there's different variations on that. But, but the first thing that you said is, is a good rule. If they, if they list a bunch of reagents over the arrow, then usually the, uh, the reagents listed first are going to actually participate in the reaction. And the reagents listed uh, later, second, are more likely to be solids. Because isn't chromium, etc., is called overoxidase, and then like, the hydrogens on these would help protonate? That's right. Is that basically what it's for? Um, let's see. So uh, I actually don't know the mechanism in enough detail to know exactly what role each of those uh, plays uh, in this case. So um, let's see. Yeah, I don't even remember the role that, uh, that these play uh, over here. I don't remember the role that the acid plays. OK. So uh, that would be uh, this reagent. So let's write the product here. So we know we're going to form a new bond between the carbon and the oxygen here. That means that the carbon and the oxygen both have to break a bond. So the oxygen is breaking the bond with its hydrogen. We don't need to worry what happens to that. That floats away. And remember, the carbon is going to break its bond with this hidden hydrogen over here. So now this doesn't have any hydrogens left. In order to oxidize, we have to break a carbon-hydrogen bond. That would give us this. OK, good. Uh, what's the name of this functional group?
sounds like you found it. Can you tell? Right. An aldehyde is when the carbonyl carbon is attached to one carbon chain and one hydrogen, but a ketone is when the carbonyl carbon is attached to two carbon chains. Okay, good. Well, those are names that are uh, worth knowing.